Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us at the Free Library of Philadelphia at Home. My name is Andy Cahan, Director of Author Events. Before we begin tonight's presentation, I wanted to point out a couple of useful features on your screen. You'll see there's a button below that suggests you buy a copy of our guest's new book, Wow, No Thank You, my favorite title of the year. And I also want to put a plug in for another best-selling collection of essays, Trick Mirror, Reflections on Self-Delusion, by our interviewer tonight. The button links to Samantha's book, but I'm sure you all know how to add to an online cart. <laughs> and I know our bookseller will be more than happy to send copies to you anywhere in the country. On the screen, you'll also see the Ask a Question link, and you can use that to ask a question, suggest a topic, upvote a question by using the arrows in the left margin. And I think that's it. And it's now my honor to introduce our guests. In her popular long-running blog, Bitches Gotta Eat, Samantha Irby offers raw, humorous takes on her sometimes difficult personal life, pop culture, and of course, food. She is also the author of three essay collections, Needy, New Year, Same Trash, Resolutions I Absolutely Did Not Keep, and the New York Times bestseller, We Are Never Meeting in Real Life. In her new and best-selling essay collection, Irby ponders inspirational Instagram infographics, being friend zoned by Hollywood, living in a red state, and the discomfort of life as a 40 year old. She'll be in conversation with New Yorker writer Gia Tolentino, whom one Samantha Irby says is the sharpest and most incisive cultural critic alive. <laughs> Gia and Sam, the screen is all yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Man, nothing is more embarrassing than listen to, listening to someone do your bio. I know. <laughs> Um, it's I'm like, I, what are you talking about? See everyone. It, it doesn't this feel like I feel like a fucking sim. Like, you know, um, I yeah, this it, is weird. It's weird to know people are watching. You know, when you'll like really feel like people are watching is on Instagram when you if if you check your other box when everyone tags you in the pictures they take of the screen. I have a question about your other box. Well, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, okay. I, well, I guess I should say, I'll, I'll ask about the other box in a second, but I should say I'm so glad that there are so many people in here hanging out with no. our stupid asses right now. No. I am so glad that, that this quarantine season has worked out. I feel like your book is the book of quarantine. I have personally bought it for four of my friends and sent it to their house. And no, they I would send you a box. And no, 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 no. It's like, it's the perfect. And I think we all know that. And I'm so glad it's gotten its shine. And I fucking love it. Like the day I got it in the mail, I stayed up and read it like start to finish. It's the best. It was like the highlight of you know, like I, I finished it and I was like so sad, but I was like, damn, it's gonna be another two years till the next one. But yeah, thank you for making our quarantines better. Oh God, thank you. That's so nice. I can't handle uh, praise, so <laughs> thank you. Have you seen that tweet that's like, um, like the quarantine tweet that's like, I can't wait to go back to normal when like, I'm still doing this, but all of you guys are. are <laughs> <laughs> no, but that is, uh, how I feel. I also feel yeah. like everybody who was like, I'm an introvert, I'm an introvert is fucking lying because now yeah. everyone's like, I can't believe I don't get to go outside. And it's like, wait a second. Uh, two months ago, I saw you tweeting that you never go outside. I thought you would be built for this. I yeah. am. You've been training for this. You've been training for this, man. Yeah. It's, I'm thriving. My skin looks good. I'm taking my vitamins. I feel, I mean, I don't feel normal because it's hard to feel normal when like people are dying, but also I just am not stressed out. And I'm like, oh, this, it, when everyone has caught up to my level of anxiety, that's when I feel the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm glad that, I mean, like promoting a book from home seems kind of stressful. And I'm glad that I'm glad that the writer's life has prepared you. Like I was going to say, is there anything that I'm sure you've gotten asked this question a lot, but what is something that you have incorporated into your stay at home vibes that you found especially useful right now? I think because I was always like, I have always made every day a new day by getting up, taking a shower, 
putting on clothes that I don't sleep in. They are as soft as pajamas, but they're not yeah. pajamas. Oh yeah. That I have maintained that and that has sort of helped it feel normal. It, yeah. It's just like the getting up, the bathing, the new underwear. I'm yeah. like, th this helps it feel like we're, we're, we're at least moving forward. Like yeah. we're trapped inside, but at least another 24 hours has, has passed. Have you, um, in terms of quarantine stress purchases, have you, have you made any spicy ones? Oh yeah. So first of all, I tried to become a different person. So here's a, a problem that I have that I need to like really write about maybe the next book I'll get into this, but I always feel like the solution to my problems is, is just one shirt purchase away. Oh, I'm yeah. like, I will find the shirt that fixes it, that I look great okay. in, that fixes okay. everything. You will. <laughs> yeah. true. One day. One it's day. Really true. So I bought, I've bought like some anthropology shirts, which is like rich shit. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, do I have $90 for a shirt? Not really, but I'm doing it. So I've bought a few like, I could wear this on a Zoom call shirt mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, skincare because I justify it by being like, oh, people are going to look at my face. But like, this isn't a high definition laptop camera. I'm just going to look as pixelated and oily <laughs> as I did before. So uh, yeah, skincare and shirts. I've bought too many. I think those will solve everything. Like part of me still believes, like for me, like it's it's PJs and slippers. Uh -huh. Like if, if I have like one day, all of my problems will go away when the PJs and slippers situation mm -hmm. is perfect, you know? Um, That's how I feel too. Have yeah. you, I mean, have you bought any universal standard clothes? I was looking at it because I was looking for 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 changing waistband friendly wear. Yeah, and I was like, is that your rec? Is that is that your? Yeah, your so model? two things. One, they're right. still, like, really comfortable. Yeah, and two, they just came out with a maternity. I saw that you can fucking change. That's so humane. Like, yes. like all clothes should be like that. It's yes, and their stuff like looks good and it's basics, but it doesn't look cheap, which is my problem. I buy a lot of shit that like disintegrates on my body and then I'm like oh that I was like that felt good for five minutes and then I washed it and it's like you fool you've been tricked again by Instagram ads yeah well I also feel like buying you know buying flammable dies hard you know it's like an old habit like mm -hmm. you know um it's so cheap and it comes right to you I had to like take ASOS off my phone because I was yeah. like, oh, it's just garbage. It's stitched together garbage. It, it's horrible for the environment. Also, um, it falls apart on my body. Yeah. No, no more. One thing that I have found really funny that I found is like really funny right when quarantine started is like one of the bougie things that like immediately got its feet cut, cut out under from it is like, you know, like the whole like all natural cleaner thing, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So, like I want like non-toxic, like, you know, and then as soon as all this started, I was like, give me the fabulous. So yeah. <laughs> I have been a uh a long been a silent crusader against what I like to call the salad cleaners, like, yeah, exactly. like the vinaigrette tub with, and it just yeah. smells like an herb salad yeah. and your tub is still dirty. I'm like, fuck that. So I have, we have been a Lysol and Clorox house for a yeah. long time. So yeah. when it started going down, I was like, it's my time to shine. Yeah. This you is like all the bleach spray you could need. Yeah. This is like the dollar store cleaner. It's like, yeah, you like walk into like a, a like a CVS and it's like the Mrs. Meyer stuff. Like we're all so suddenly it's everyone's like, fuck no. that. Like, yeah. Straight Give straight me that purple <laughs> fabuloso. Yeah, exactly. Fabuloso yeah. <laughs> what has your, um, what has your like screen time been like in quarantine? Just whenever I'm not sleeping. I know. I, I like to, so this is how, you know, you always like laugh at like old people's habits and shit and then you see yourself doing it. So I'm a like carry the iPad, which is just like walking around with the TV yeah. kind of person. So I have been watching 
Um, what have I been watching? J anything. I will watch. I can get in anything if you leave it on long enough. Yeah. Even stuff I'm like, mm, that's dumb. Like if I see four episodes, I'm like, no, deeply yeah. invested. Yeah. Deeply <laughs> invested. I care about these people like they're my family. Um, I, so I've been watching the new season of Survivor, which is good. It's all people who have won before. Um, yeah, it's all winners going against each other. So it's like the best of the best. I I truly, I it's nothing I would ever do. I don't believe in starving. Uh, I don't believe in being dirty. So I would never like want to go on Survivor, but like watching starving people compete in their underwear for, you know, two chicken legs is... Yeah is extremely my shit. So I've been watching that. I've been watching um, this show called Evil on CBS, which is about exorcisms. Again, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, on the surface, I'm like, mm, dumb. Watch two episodes, I'm like, I'm in. It you know, I just started that. watching that HBO yeah. show Run. Have oh, I started it? watching it too. It, it's pretty spicy. It's good. Pretty that spicy. redhead dude. Could fuck you with the hair with the lights on. He is. So Have you, you seen the Black Mirror episode where he's like he's like the reanimated Ken doll? No, you know Black Mirror scares me. This one would scare you, but he plays like a clay doll that's like reanimated and given a chip with all the it like it's and it like it cut the sex of me. You know, he literally like inflates out of a box, and I was like. I can't do it. I can't do it. Black yeah, Mirror, like, Black Mirror, like truly makes me scared yeah. of being alive. I yeah. can't. He's, I mean, he's so cute. I might risk it just to watch him. He's so cute. We can watch this, the Kendall episode. <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll stop asking about quarantine in a second, but it's like, it's no, we so can't. who cares? Mm -hmm. It's just us and I thirteen know. of our children. I, I, I mean. So what are your like situational, like very specific situational cravings that you're having right now? Like, uh, like, are you having, like for me, I've like, I find myself texting my friends things like, I would, I would spend a thousand dollars to wait in line for three hours outside the worst club in New Jersey. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, would, I would stand at the bar trying to get a beer for 75 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like these things that like, I would never ever, you know, I would go to the worst fucking music festival in the world for four months, you know? No. <laughs> like I'm having these, like, are you having any of these like? Yeah, Stan, I was just writing earlier in my newsletter about how much I miss the club and like how, although I would be terrified two years from now when we're all vaccinated, I just want to throw a big party and oh, get like, some DJs and get people together. The thing I miss the most and that I would, I mean, it's already expensive, but I would pay $500 to go to the movies. Yeah. Even if it's a movie filled with babies and people who talk to the screen, oh, yeah. like they're at home. I just want some movie popcorn and I want to watch a movie in the dark with a bunch of strangers. That's my thing that I really, and I'm not like a, movie person, I don't understand, <laughs> that's not, okay, I'm just gonna say this. I don't understand movies really, like the nuance is lost on me. Same, <laughs> like, I've never predicted a twist in my life. <laughs> never, never. I, one of my favorite, most embarrassing stories is I went to see The Sixth Sense. <laughs> oh, you already know what I'm gonna say. I feel, I feel like I already know the, end, the big reveal, I won't spoil it for anyone who maybe hasn't seen it. When the reveal happens, I was shot. I like, and I don't scream at the movies. I lost my shit. I was like, oh my God. And my friend who I went with was like, he's been yeah. wearing the same sweater the whole time. How yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, huh? <laughs> she was like, he had, how could you not see that? That's not a twist. It Every twist. That's why I read like thrillers and mysteries. Because yeah, I'm never Gone get. Girl, halfway through Gone Girl, when the when yeah, you find like, out, <laughs> like, yeah, 
I dropped the book on the floor. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what's so good about the movies is like, I mean, I'm completely like this too. Like, so I, I've only cried. I never cry because I like, part of my heart is like just fully, you know, whatever. But I've only cried at like five movies. And one of the movies I cried at was the first Lord of the Rings movie. because I was really high and I was with my parents <laughs> and I thought that, Boromir and Aragorn were the same person. Mm -hmm. And so when Boromir died, and then the very end, like my mom was like, you know, those are two different men. And I was like, what? You know? <laughs> like, I never understand anything. Like I could watch an action movie and the next day someone could be like, what happened in that movie? And I'd be like, yeah, I don't know. Well, like, talk about how I saw Inception the I, night it opened and like, it was like nice to look at. Love Tom Hardy and Joseph. Yeah. Love, love Leo. Love all of it. And then I saw it with my friends Mark and Laura. And afterward, they were talking about like the plot, and I was like, "Huh? I didn't really get it." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, excuse me. Like, I was like, wait, wait. It's about what? When I saw Memento. <laughs> People are always like, why do you call yourself a dumb bitch? And I'm like, you know, I don't read. Yeah. But like shit like that, where I'm like watching a movie and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't get that. I don't understand what happened. This is okay. So this is a like legit question that I wanted to ask you where like, I also consider myself to be a dumb fucking bitch. <laughs> There's a way in which that, like I found it really um, confusing around book promotion where someone would be like, oh, it's your brand to sort of like fake this self depth or not fake even, but like this sort of, uh, like it's your joke that you're stupid or whatever. And you're like, no, no, no. It's it's like the deepest conception of, of my truth. Like it's like all my friends, my partner knows I'm stupid. Like mm -hmm. how do you, like how have you dealt with the fact that it's like you, like I, I would guess that you are a, genuinely, truly, like, you know, this, like, I'm a dumb bitch truth is a deeply held one for you as it is for me. But there's a way in which, like, when it comes out in your writing or, like, your online self, people kind of interpret it as, like, a selling point when it's, like, no, 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 it's, like, how, how do you, how do you think? Yeah, about I, I find that people are, like, cynically, like, oh, you're just trying to seem relatable. Yeah. And I'm like, Here's I that hard to deal with personally. Yeah. <laughs> like, I truly have a 12th grade education. <laughs> I did one year, and I so I keep I keep reminding people of that because there truly is a lot of shit I just don't know. And I think there's two kinds of smart, right? And I don't even mean, I mean like there's a person who knows where uh Nicaragua is on a map and there's a person who doesn't and I'm in the I don't camp and I think that means I'm a little dumb because I yeah. could have yeah. learned that and didn't pick it up so yeah, it has not nothing to do with like educational attainment like I, I went to when I filmed that reality tv show, show in Puerto Rico I thought I was underneath yeah. California the whole time like <laughs> you know <laughs> like yes. <laughs> yes, I do know. I don't like basic geography. I, let me tell you, I probably shouldn't even like say this, but whatever. We're all friends. So I did this interview um, like a few weeks ago with, I, I don't even remember the newspaper, but then I had to email my friend Ian, who's like very smart and knows a lot of shit. And I was like, what is this paper? What country is it from? And is it problematic that I did this interview? Yeah. And then he had to like write me back about the, you know, like the politics of some newspaper. And I was like, was it problematic? Like, did, did you end up in on the alt right forum of Estonia or whatever? <laughs> no, I didn't. Thank God. But I was like, I first of all, no, we didn't check beforehand, which is maybe like. <laughs> A problem, but also like, why don't I just know? That's why, like, people are always like, "How come you don't talk about like politics?" And I'm like, "You shouldn't want me to." I graduated from the twelfth grade. I had a C average. You want somebody with a three two from high school who did no learning after that? 
I don't know. About politics? Sure. On that front, I kind of, on that front, I do though. It's like the world is definitely too full of people who think that like a GPA or a fucking like, you know, like fucking fancy education like me. Cause like, I, I don't know, those people are at like, I feel like it's like, everyone's really dumb. Like it's yeah. like, yeah. Like it's like yeah. you're lying, like yeah. or maybe you are with somebody. It like couldn't be me, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, like I know what I believe. I believe in like universal basic income and Medicare for all and all that yeah. shit. But like to articulate it to a person, I I'm really lucky in that one of my very best friends who I've known since the the sixth grade. Um, was the executive director of moveon.org. Yeah. So like every time political stuff pops off, I'm like, Anna, what what do we yeah. do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she like tells me and I'm like, okay. I'm like, who do we support? It's still oh, it's heartbreaking Michigan though. Like I like my one of my favorite people to talk to about politics is um like I'm so I'm still really good friends with my mailman from Ann Arbor. Uh-huh. And- like, and he's really fucking smart about politics. And we would like get beer and talk about it. Like when I lived there and he really thought that Bernie was going to take Michigan. And, and I like, it's like the first time he's been wrong about what Michigan, where they were going. And, and it was, it was a, it was a sad moment. Yeah. It was really uh, sad. This was whole sad. election cycle, like these last so few are fucking killing me. My editor emailed me and was like, any interest in writing about the Tara Reid stuff? And I was like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, there's no other thought other than like he shouldn't have been the nominee. He's a terror. Like, he shouldn't be the nominee. Yeah, and, like, I, he's filled me with nothing but despair since day one. So, like, I can't even. Like, I have no thought. Anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, back to the yeah. Instagram. In uh, other words, no, I don't want to write about it at all. Yeah. Want I'm me to call you? Right no, I don't know. That's just the piece. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, the whole piece is just like drop out, drop out, drop out. Yeah, like it's it, it was like that from day one. It's just yeah. Um, but okay, let me revisit your Instagram other DM box because I was wondering, like, as, and look again, I'm asking this from a personal space. Like you, I felt like I knew you as soon as I started reading you, and this is a, like the like the magic of your writing, but it also puts you in a strange position, which is where strangers feel like they know you very well, even though the relationship is asymmetrical. And I feel like I only recently got to understand um, like what that really could be like. Cause I think like, I also write very freely about myself um, Mm -hmm. and that the like asymmetry of the intimacy, like mostly I try to not think of it as asymmetrical and be like, you know, I'm open to you, you are open to me, like, it's just the vibe. But it can get really weird in the in the other DM box. Like, mm-hmm. to me, that's the place where I most am like, maybe my writing is, like, <laughs> like, maybe something is weird here in terms of the social relationship. Like, what is your, what is your Instagram other DM box look like? It, so I forget, mm, forget is, yeah, a boy. I don't check it regularly because yeah. it's stressful. So a lot of it is, is like people. Yeah. I, so here's the thing about having this is going to sound so dumb, but the thing about having like a cover of your book that people want to take a picture of. I get tag like people post the books a lot, which is incredible. Thank you. Please continue to post those. Um, so I get tagged in a lot of like stories where someone mentioned or like post the book and then mentioned me. So there's a lot of, and I see it too late. So it's just a lot of like, so-and-so mentioned you, but I don't know what they said. So it could have been like, fuck this dumb book, or it could have been like, yay, look at this, look at this cover. So aside from that, I get, so I just checked it recently and I got a, a message from a, a no no posts, no followers, not following anyone account that was like, um, you're ugly and disgusting. And I wrote back and was oh, like, no. I, <laughs> I don't usually believe in engaging, but I was feeling spicy. I had just woken up and I wrote back and was like, well, please, could you help me? Could you put me in touch with the person who gave Nicolas Cage a new face and face off? <laughs> I, I would love please help my crops. They're dying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's sometimes a little bit of that. And usually Did they reply. Uh, yeah. They told me that I should be in comedy. Oh, 
They're like, you're funny. Oh, you're funny. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, ugly people have to do something funny. <laughs> or I can't do math so I can make jokes. But um, <laughs> so it's mostly people like uh, most of the messages are positive and it's someone okay. who says, thank you for writing this or I, I read this or here's where someone mentioned you and that was good. I fucking love that. I try to write back to people. Um, I, the, the only thing that's hard, some people don't like, I never know if they want me to write back or if they'll think I'm rude for not writing back. So sometimes if someone thanks me, I don't want to get in a fucking thank you circle jerk where I'm like, no, thank you for reading. And then they write back, no, thank you for writing. And then like, <laughs> we do that until we die. Yeah. <laughs> and then like sometimes some people ask for advice and I'm like, well, I don't have any, but I could tell you like what I did and maybe that'll help you. That's but really nice. <laughs> What'd you say? That's really nice. So I can, I can I can DM you here for your for your advice anytime I fucking want. Like, yeah. I mean, I what you know I, the thing is I feel like my advice won't help, so I just like give it. I'm like, well, I had a blog for ten years and uh, then put out an indie book, and then my agent found me, and you know, blah blah oh, blah. What's advice about well, you write. I mean, you one of the essays in the book is that. Thing. Yeah, like, so many people were asking me, yeah. like, how, as a regular person, I did yeah. it. And I'm like, well, if you want to follow this extremely specific route to this, here, yeah. here you go. But for the most part, it's positive, and it's from people who actually read. I don't get a lot of people who don't know who I am and what I do. And I think, I mean, I would be interested to see like the inbox, especially of like a fat person who's like posing in underwear or like being really joyful in their body. Cause I bet those other inboxes are full of much more like hatred. I don't, I don't know that people, I mean, they'll start now, but I don't know that people really seek out like self deprecating person to like yeah. shit on. It was just so that I have special, a lot of, of that. Special guy. Um, <laughs> and then I'm gonna leave my wife and marry him because truly that's yeah. what I want. It's just how I met your how I met your dad. <laughs> I have a nice column writer. I, I I like when I used to work at the hairpin like me and my co-editor Emma would always make this joke like I always wanted a, an advice column because my answer would always be like I don't know. Some people like it and some people don't. Yeah. You're gonna have to do what you want. Like yeah. do what you want. But you're and also people do that anyway, right? It's like everyone just does what they want no matter what. Like I find yeah. I find like the advice, the performance of advice, I find kind of like a but you give really good advice in your advice column essay. And the one that I really liked in there was like someone, like it was like this example of someone being like, you know, my boyfriend has been liking other women's Facebook statuses. Like, what do I do? And you were like, bitch, this is very good. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh anytime, anytime I see my wife doing literally anything other than looking at or talking to me, talks about, and like, I don't know, tell me if this is the same for you. But nobody talks about the, like, everybody wants to get in a relationship and nobody talks about the intense pressure to, like, be interesting to another person all the time. So yeah. anytime my wife's, like, reading something or she's like, I'm going to go be in the garden, that's 20 minutes where I don't have to be saying anything insightful or funny. So I love it. Yeah, I mean, the whole, I mean, just the basic sort of premise of monogamy where, like, even you're just supposed to be able to supply each other with yeah. your needs just all the yeah. time. Like, I feel like, you know, it's it's always a little bit ridiculous. It's especially ridiculous in quarantine mm -hmm. where it's like, like when we got up here, like one thing that I've been like the first week we were, I was with my partner who I feel like my relationship has been so good with him because he <laughs> works all like we basically only see each other on weekends, which is uh -huh. fucking Height, like it's, it's like a, always dream. Dream to see him, you know. That's but this, you know, was like, okay. And then I was like, what if I was realizing because I'm pregnant? I was like, 
what if we're just in this house together alone for like nine months? Because I was like, what are you, what are we going to fucking talk about? Like, what, like this is like Chris Rock stand up routine. We was like, go out and have some other shit happen to you. Yeah. Like in quarantine. Like, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. My wife just like went and bought a bike and I was like, great. Yeah. Buy 10 bikes. Yeah. Oh, to anything. And I like her. It's not even that. Oh, she's yeah, like, no. Annoying. Yeah. It's just like you got to be having some other experiences so we can come together at the end of the night and you can tell me what you did on your bike ride and I'll tell you about all the tweets I scrolled through and then it'll be like exciting. <laughs> yeah, so and it's also like I can't be fucking like it's like I, I I love it. I personally love it when Andrew looks at like someone's thirst traps on Instagram. I'm like, thank God because I look like, like it's like I can't I can't I can't be attractive to you right now. No, <laughs> this is day no. quarantine. Like. It's not going to be me, you know? Or ever. I just, I always am just looking for ways to get the heat off of me. Yeah. So if you, if, if my wife was like, listen, I got to go be with this other person. I'll come back. But like, I got it. And I'd be like, okay, they vaccinated. Okay, great. <laughs> I know. I, I said something like that to my boyfriend once, and he was like, he got so sad. And I was like, never mind. <laughs> um, but I was yeah, like, she, I feel like she never like, would. She never would, but I tell her every day. Every time we yeah. see a hot person in a movie, I'm like, if you see that person for real, go ahead. She's I know. Like, I think, oh, and I'm like, well, you could. We're, we're with these like wonderful people that we're so eager for them to do like transgressions. Yeah. Everybody in the comments is like, you don't deserve them. And I know, it's like true. true. Yeah. No. 100% true. Um, yeah. There's another part of the the book where you, I, I don't remember whether it was that essay or not, but you talk about being little. Oh, maybe it is not in that the advice column essay. We talk about being little and wanting to marry Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk about that for a sec. Who is hotter, mm -hmm. Beast or sexy. Simba, when Simba grows up? Beast. Beast. Tell me why. Well, so I like a little rough around the edges. I like yeah, a, little, yeah, yeah. a little gruffness. And Simba, yeah. like, he fought Scar, but he was still, I can't like, get the Thomas Taylor, Thomas yeah, 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 yeah. out of my head. And so I'm like, well, he sexy, but no, Beast has like that yeah. the ripped off like tuxedo or whatever when he was fighting the wolves. I'm like, yes. I once like, you know, like online somewhere, like I once got really, really high and I was like, what? You know, you know have you ever gotten like, have you ever been like, what animal is the beast? And I found yeah. this animator composite where they showed like how they took like the buffalo head and like the horse hindquarter. And I was like, <laughs> Looking at Buffalo. Know, like, this is opening a whole new world for me because, like, I assume he has, has like, both ears so that they're like kind of cute, but oh, then, yeah. then it's Buffalo, but then the chest is like a different, like, it's very interesting. <laughs> like, I just assumed it was like a mutant lion, but no, yeah. those wolf ears. Wolf ears oh my God. I was going to do a deep dive. I bet you feel know, like beast fanfic community yeah. is popping I bet it is. i'm gonna get into it well actually this is why the movies are so great like so the best experience i ever had at the movies was um like i i got really really high and went to see the live action one and it oh was, it was so bad well, i mean it was so bad but you know i was like high and it was the middle of the day you know i was like really like dreaming mm -hmm. and a good woman two like two seats over from me she like, we were the only people in the theater and like maybe one person in the back and she slides her popcorn in the middle of us and was like, do you want some popcorn? And like, I, I just, at the moment I was like, fell in love with her. And then, <laughs> you know, then we're like doing the lady and the tramp, like, you know, we're just, and mm -hmm. then right when the beast like, is like Emma Watson's like at the top of the stairs and the beast is waiting for her and it goes to him. She leans over and she goes, what's his dick like? <laughs> and I was like, you're my best friend. And then I was yes. Did you keep in contact with her? I was nervous. I was really high. And I was like, is it going to be really weird if I ask her for her number? And then I didn't because I was like afraid. Like I sometimes will send. Yeah. And, and then I did it and I really fucked up. But yeah, she, it was. That's why the movie is incredible. I am sure there is some animated Bell and Beast porn. porn. I'm going to go look for it after this. Yeah, me too. Um, 
<laughs> okay, another question. You once wrote a novel and put it in your the trunk of your car and then gave it to somebody that you had a crush on. Mm -hmm. What was the novel about? It was about these these this set of twins i am so my, i have three sisters and they are 20 17 and 15 years older than i am yeah. so it wasn't like having sisters it's like having like fucking four moms yeah. and so i am like obsessed with the close sibling relationship so it was about these two sisters one is dumb one is smart and uh the smart one of course is like homely and uh, it's basically about them having to go from one high school to the other and kind of like navigate, they move. And so they have to navigate high school life in a new town. I am thinking about, so I don't have a physical copy of it, but I do have the memories and I've started to like piece it back together. Really? and write a new version of it. Sure. If, I mean, here's a thing that happens. I don't know if this happens to you, but you get a little success and it's like, mm, would somebody buy a new experimental thing from me? <laughs> so I keep telling, I like over the last couple of books, I've been like, no, don't do it. No, don't do it. No, don't do it. But then now this book just came out, we're stuck inside and I'm like, well, I have the time you Maybe should. I'll do it. So I have a, a couple new chapters written. I'm wow. going to I'll send it to you and I'll send Ooh. it to my agent and see if he's like, girl, stick, stick with what you know. Um, I, I don't know. There's something really like I used to try to write fiction. I don't think I was very good at it, but there is something mm -hmm. like, especially if uh, like, you know, in your personal voice, you have to kind of stay true to your personal vibe and yeah. for a while I was like that that is the thing that I'm good at but, but like the way that you can be like much meaner or much nicer or much like mm -hmm. something like right now I've been feeling that kind of vibe bubble oh I'm so excited about this yeah okay everybody hold me accountable like if you don't if you don't get it from get a couple chapters from me in a month to hit me up like what the fuck and I'll I'll send them to you okay in like five minutes I'm gonna start at like asking some of the questions y'all have sent in, but I, but I want to ask you, so one of the things that I really have always appreciated so much about your work and you, and one thing that I feel really connected to is like, well, A, I feel like we're uh, compatriots in the whole vibe of like, expect absolutely nothing from life and you will always be pleased. Yeah. Like thinking about like, like I never, I never expected to be creatively fulfilled by work. It is a surprise mm -hmm. every day to get to mm -hmm. be it's such an extreme luxury. And I know you feel that mm -hmm. you talk about it all the time. It's like, what an anomaly to yeah. get, to, to get to be fucking fulfilled by work. Like mm -hmm. it's not the normal thing. And I think about that all the time. And I think about what work is like for the vast majority of the people in this country all the time. And I think that like, this is one of the things that the pandemic is really making people think about, right? That like, um, and it's like, I guess it, like we're seeing what work is so undervalued and what work is actually like. Yeah. And, and I guess I wanted to ask you like, what has having, like for me, I don't know, like what what is having undervalued jobs? Like what has, what has that experience of doing that work? What has it taught you and what is it making you think about right now? So like, I mean, it's so, I moved to Michigan four years ago and um, was a receptionist at an animal hospital for 14 years. And my friend Brooke took my old job and we still talk all the time. And she's still, they're still working. They're still like taking care of animals. And so I think all the time about like, if that was still my life, I would be wearing a mask like bringing dogs in for nail trims or, or whatever it is that people need. Um, I, so I don't trust anything, especially not this being my job. So I am always like ready to go back to doing, and this is where, uh, this is why I think I talk so much about my upbringing and education because uh, if I have to stop doing this, if I get to the point where people are like, no, we don't want whatever you're selling, 
the job I could go back to is some sort of hourly work. And honestly, I'd be happy to do it. You know right. what I mean? Like I'd be fine at Walgreens or the gas station or wherever it is that I could right. like walk it's in. Like, we're not, we're not, like no one is too fucking good for that kind of work. No, like, I no. You know? no. And it's, yeah. but you leave it there. Like yeah. nothing is better yeah. than the job you fucking, you walk out of the job and it's done. Right. And you like the next day you think about it when you walk in, you don't have to take it home. Um, so I think, I mean, one of the things is, and like, you know, you don't make crazy money doing this. And like, the only reason that I'm able to do this as a job is because we live in a crumbling farmhouse in Michigan where you can pay $700 a month and have a house. Whereas my fucked up studio in Chicago was like, 850 uh and you had to like dodge a bullet every time you came home um so i think watching the like watching what's happening now with like people in grocery stores like wearing masks and not being protected it i it's like i'm only four years removed from that yeah. and i always am i'm truly like one rejection away from going yeah. to pick up um uh, an application at Target. Yeah. So I feel I don't know that I would ever not feel like like a person who works uh, an hourly job. Yeah. Um and it I mean one of the things that is distressing to me is that it took something like a pandemic for people to be like, "Oh no, those are the essential people. I was talking to Brooke the other day and she said that a client had come in and given everybody like 20 bucks cash for being there and working. And that's like, that never happens. And right. it was just like, it's nice to see that people are recognizing it, but also if we could recognize it and ensure that, you know, they can make at least $15 an hour. Yeah and get health insurance, that would be better. That's what I hope is on the other side of this. Me too. And I think that like, right, it's like, to me, it's, it's so obvious. It's like, no one is too fucking good to, yeah, no. to work these hourly jobs. Like there, it's, it's work, like it's, and, and it's like, and people wouldn't feel like the whole idea that it's lesser work is just because it's so devalued when it like, right. it actually, like it's, like everyone is paid the make the country, country yeah. run. Like it right. truly it's like know, it's people it's cutting your hair. hair. Yeah. <laughs> the people cutting your hair and like bringing your groceries to the car and whatever, those are the people that keep your life going. And like I know that perspective like you want perspective to illuminate things for people, and I know it won't, but I hope no, it will. I, I, there's still a little, okay. I'm going to, there's so many questions here. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to ask us. Like, we didn't come to a socialist. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sam, what kind of frittata would you make for G if she could visit you right now? Oh, oh my God. Okay. Well, I'm going to say what we actually have in the house. Cause that's how I do it. Um, it would have onions, potatoes, Poblano peppers, Ooh. probably shrimp, because I saw we had cool. some little shrimps in there. And I know we have many cheeses. I think there's a pepper jack cheese Love that I would that make you. So well. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what I would make you. Also, you are welcome. I mean, not now, but when we're all free, you are welcome here anytime. That's a dream. Um, okay. What irresponsibly expensive candles should I buy to bring me comfort in quarantine? Oh, this, okay. I'm going to look like a real fucking asshole. Are you going to say fucking dip cheese or something? No, even fancier. Nicole Cliff sent me a Sierra Trudon cancel, candle. Wait, here it is. Okay. This is what it looks like. Ooh. It's this one. like. It's like a mint tea set. Ooh. Yeah, Sierra Trudon. It, it, I'm sure it's more expensive than life itself, but it smells so good. So yes, get that if you can afford it. And if you want a cheap, oh, you know, I also love, it's not cheap, but DS and Durga, they have a their big sir after the rain candle. Ooh, so, good. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Nothing makes you feel better than like a fancy candle. Nothing. Um, 
Yeah, I agree. I like the Maison Louis, Louis Marie number Ooh. four. Um, I'm gonna that's stupid. Um, <laughs> okay, top quarantine jams to dance and or cry to. Oh, well, I mean, if you want to cry, the new Apache yeah. is so oh. good. Have you listen to that? Oh. oh, that's all I've been listening to. So it's good. That's all I've been listening to. But it just makes me, like, it makes me so upset that I can't be with my friends. Like, mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's an album that you're supposed to like be around people. You're supposed to be driving with somebody. Yeah. You know, roll down the fucking window and like look mm -hmm. at your friend and be like, "You're so beautiful." Ugh. It's so good. And That's to dance album to, yeah. You know what I've been dancing to, and like this is gonna make me. I don't know. People might change their minds about me. Uh, Selena Gomez's new record. I haven't listened to it. You it's have to. It's so good. I Let me get me is like fucking. So good. Dua Lipa. What else? Christine Dua and the Lipa. Queens. Uh, Christine. Uh, the pe People Have Been Sad is like one of my favorite album uh, songs of the year. Like it's, yeah, it's oh, so when it like, when that part hits. Uh. Uh -huh. The new <laughs> Robin, of course, but like it feels like old to say that, but it's, it's yeah. still good. Also the new Tame Impala. Tame Impala is incredible. The vibes are really good. I'm loving the new Caribou as well. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's giving me club fantasies and that's also hard to do with. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's hard to listen to upbeat music because then you're like, where can I go and dance? Yeah, to it's and sort of like being nowhere. horny and like not, and you're like kind of wary of watching something that's too horny because you're uh -huh. like, oh, then I'll get tipped over the edge. Like, <laughs> um, Okay, not a question, but can we just talk about how amazing a person Sam actually is? She is so funny. And even though she says she's not smart, she is so not stupid. Best unique voice and so engaging. Love her. I agree. Just had to Who read. Who is that? Does that person want to me? Um, this is an invitation to you. Let's get married. <laughs> okay. Could you talk a little bit about staying creative during this time? I know a lot of creators, me including, or me included, are struggling to find inspiration right now. Can I just can I just weigh in here and say like yes, please you know, put pressure on yourself to. That's be what creative. I was gonna say. Like, fuck that, man! Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I would say if you if there is something that is inspiring you and you feel like you want to use this time to do it, great. But like, you know, I don't put pressure on myself to do anything at any time ever, especially not now. Take permission to um, not do anything. I will say I was talking to uh, Lindy West the other day and a thing that I do in my newsletter and that she's doing in her new book, that feels like good writing practice is if you watch or listen to something and you want to write about that, that has sort of helped to get the juices flowing, like coming up with my own original ideas, not happening right now, but I can watch an episode of judge Mathis and talk shit about it. So yeah. if you feel like you need to be doing something like watch a movie and then like write about the movie, but also you could just go to sleep and not, not force yourself to do anything. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, because I, I I was assuming we had similar reactions to the vibe at the beginning of quarantine when everyone was like, now's the time to finally learn Italian. I was like, no. I feel like, I, and this is something that, this is one of the reasons that, I don't know if you feel like this about writing, but I feel that the energy you bring to writing is the energy that people kind of bring out of it. Uh -huh. and, I, and, and you write like, like, um, like I know you write in kind of like a like a fervor, right? Like you kind of like, mm -hmm. like it, and and that's how it feels to read your work. And I think, yeah. and I think that like that's why you can never force anything. You can because yeah. it will feel like yeah. I, I feel so motivated by pleasure and like a weird internal sense of fulfillment. Like, yeah, so yeah. Right I, read from from I read a quote from you. I can't tell you where, but where you were you were talking about how everything you write comes from this place of wanting to write about that thing. Even yeah. if it's topical, you're like, this satisfies an itch that I have. And I was like, that's so great. And that's how it should be. Cause that's why I've never like written on assignment. It's cause it's like, I can't produce when it's like, you told me to write a thing and I don't really know about it or I don't want to do it. That doesn't ever feel good. But when I am like, let me write about how anxious I am going to the grocery store or whatever it is, then it comes pouring right out. 
Yeah, there's something like I, I'm a real believer in chemistry, like like chem, like you and having chemistry with your own subject. And if you don't mm -hmm. have that, it just won't work. And mm -hmm. so maybe like the key right now, it's like if you're like you got to ride whatever wave, like you either got to ride whatever wave you're mm -hmm. that's with you, or like go to sleep. <laughs> it's my yeah. time. Yes. <laughs> don't pressure yourself because also I never want to look but I can always tell there were some things that didn't end up in this book and I look back at them and I'm like oh there's a reason that I didn't finish that thing and I was pushing a thing that didn't feel good you never want to look back at something you've created like art or music yes. or whatever and be like oh that that's the thing I forced myself to do because I had free quarantine time so don't push it don't pressure yourself yeah like honestly the best thing we could do is just like yeah like just fucking chill i feel <laughs> um okay because when we come out of it we're all gonna be like work you know like <laughs> working yeah, like, if, if there was ever a time to like relax i mean for me for a long time i've been trying to relax this like fucked up relationship i have with production like and, mm -hmm. and it's hard when you love the thing that you do and you feel so mm -hmm. lucky do it yep. but i i've been trying to relax this idea that i need to be doing stuff all the time yeah you don't and yeah you don't like that. Now that all of us relax that. yeah don't. read watch tv do yeah, anything that's else. it always read yeah. um, how do you navigate writing in a full house um well so the children leave every week which is good so like it's week on week off so sometimes they're gone and that makes things much easier. But yeah. I have had to shift my writing. I used to love writing in the morning or in the middle of the day, like when the sun was out, I felt, I mean, I didn't want to go be in the sun, but I felt energized by seeing the sun. And now I have completely changed. This entire book was written between the hours of 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. Because that's when the house is quiet. I need to not, I need to know that like no one's coming around the corner to ask me something or yeah. no one's watching me or looking at me. So I just write in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just realized that these questions have votes by popularity and I thought they were numbered in the order of class. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna ask the top question, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, and this is something that I'm sure that you get asked a lot. How how do you navigate telling stories about people in your life and your work, especially stories that put them in an unflattering light? Do you have conversations with them before you publish? Has your writing about people you know impacted your relationships with them? So to answer the last question first, no. Anyone I've written about who I still have a relationship with was cool with it. Uh, when I write about like exes, I think those are the only people I write about in a bad way, like exes or people I'm not friends with anymore. I will usually change a name and change a characteristic. Uh, this kind of writing that I do always gets a legal read. Like yeah. they, they have to have a lawyer come in and read it so I can't get sued because I can't afford to be sued. I mean, like, what are they going to take? My candles? Um, <laughs> But like, so in the, in the last book in We're Never Meeting, I wrote this whole thing about my ex-boyfriend, Fred, and used his real name. And I sent it to him beforehand. And I was like, you know, this is really good. But if you don't like it, I won't put it in the book. And he, I don't know if he read it, but he told me it was fine. Yeah. Um, writing about my wife, I don't let her read anything I write unless she's in it. And with her, I only like exaggerate things about her. And I think sometimes she's like, you know, I don't drink that much kombucha, but I'm like, well, bitch, you seem like it. Um, <laughs> yeah. so she doesn't really say anything. Her kids, I don't write specifically about them because they're not mine. And my worst nightmare is like 10 years from now, one of these motherfuckers is like, you know, I'm on drugs and I robbed a bank because you wrote about my period in detail in your book. So I'm like, <laughs> They're not mine to destroy, so I won't destroy them. But with my friends and stuff, if my friends are going to see themselves in it, I'm like, uh, this is what I wrote. Is that okay? I'll change it if it's not okay. And most people are like, yes, put it in there. Even if it's like kind of bad, they're, they're okay with it. Everyone wants to be a star. <laughs> and also, I think that like... Like, this is also a question I get asked a lot, and it's sort of like, like, 
unless you're a fundamentally exploitative person of which there are mm -hmm. lots of writers who are like it's like you're not like I think we're fairer in our minds than we think. Like I've yeah. never done something to anyone and they've been like, don't. I've like always, I'm so afraid of being unfair in my own brain that like, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you have the added, you have the added layer of like having parents who can read it. And I think that for me is the most freeing thing. Like people are like, yeah. how can you be so free? And I'm like, well, the only people who really could shut me down are either someone I work for who like doesn't want me to reflect poorly on their company or my parents and my parents, you know, died in 1998. So that's no problem. And my old boss, Jim, who I worked for, for forever, who I still like think of as like my dad was always like, do whatever you want. Just make sure you're at work at seven 30. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I I love the hole on the internet. Great. <laughs> like, perfect. I love it. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll do two more. So, okay. um, in terms of the project of, ban of balancing painful truths with humor, mm -hmm. what ways have you found to be successful or unsuccessful engaging which details to keep in? Here is my, I don't have any hard and fast rules right. except for this, which is, and you can relate to this Gia for sure. If you're not, I don't write about anything. I'm not prepared. I would, I would be, upset by seeing on the news because yeah. essentially when you put a thing in a book it is just going to be thrown in your face for the rest of your life you're going to have to confront it right every day for the rest of your life people are going to pick over it and email you about it and talk to you on book tour so i don't write anything unless i am comfortable enough with it to talk about it over and over and over with all kinds of people with uh, professionals with people who show up to readings. And so I, there are things, anything that I'm like, Oh, that feels too sensitive or like, cause I never want to give anyone the kind of experience where like they buy my book and they want to talk to me about it. And then I'm like, but I can't talk to you about that. That's right. bullshit. If I put it in a book, I want to right. talk to you about right. it. Yeah. So the, the balance, I think it always works because I don't write about things that are, that feel too upsetting. Like if it feels like too raw of a wound, yeah. I don't do it. Um, I, before the last question, it's been really nice to watch the sky get dark outside your window. Oh, yeah. I miss how late the sky gets, like in summer, how late it gets dark in Michigan. I really miss it. Yeah. Um, well, you're Michigan. You need to come back. I mean, I know you have a life and a job in New York, but if you were no, in, I, I want to hang, man. I want to like two hours hang. apart. I'd come see you all the time. We'll, we'll figure this out. We'll, we'll figure it out. work on our retirement plan. Um, okay. Last question: What is your go-to self-soothing me me mechanism? Oh, this is easy. Um, ice cream and sad music. I just okay. So during my like quarantine purchase, but we've been ordering uh, Jenny's ice cream by the case Ooh. over here. It's what's your favorite so flavor? I recently um, found out from my boyfriend that his favorite dessert is ice cream. Like it's like of all desserts, it's just ice cream. I was like, how lucky for you because it's fucking everywhere. <laughs> like, yeah. well, Jenny, it I mean, it truly is like eating a stick of butter. It's so good. Yeah. The almond brittle, okay. very good. Good the gooey, never had that. gooey butter cake, also good. Oh. Salted peanut butter with mm. chocolate flecks. Mm. Clearly, we're an expert. I need to call Jenny and be like, uh, can, we, can I get a sponsorship? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ice cream and sad music in headphones. Mm. I like, uh, like it in my head, yeah. the sadness, and then eating. That's how yeah. I speak. So. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I highly recommend that everyone here, like, yeah, if you, if you need to feel good, if you need to feel like warm and have company, read, you know, read Sam's book again. But if you want to like have a really good time, li listen to the Waxahachie album in your in your headphones and think about how much you miss your friends. That song <laughs> Fire like makes me want to cry. Also, I've been listening on a loop Mitski's Me and My Husband. I mean... It's like a short story. It's like a it's like a Carver short story. It's like so good. Um, 
We are living in a golden age. I mean, everyone says every age is a golden age of music, but sad girl songs are really. Oh yeah. Like, the, like sad girl indie songwriting. I mean, even like I would like, yeah. Yeah, everyone listen, everyone go listen to Max Satchi album. Yeah, do it. It'll make your life better. Um, thank you, Sam. I'm thank you. I'm so you. glad to get to talk to you. I think this, uh, was, so great. this was so great. Oh, Thanks, okay. Sam. Thank you, Gia, so much. Um, I'm a little concerned. I have to now find out what my daughters think about when they watch Disney movies. Um, <laughs> oh, they think the animals are hot. I was just watching Mulan yeah. the other day, they're and the around, is pretty hot. They're thinking about who's hot. They're yeah. thinking about they're, they're, all, they're all hot. One hot yeah. animal in every Disney movie. Yeah. Well, now I know. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for coming out tonight and doing this. It was both hilarious and really uh, enlightening, too, in a lot of ways about writing and, and COVID, et cetera. Everyone else, be sure to follow us on Crowdcast and visit us online at freelibrary.org slash author events to access our digital archives and updated event schedule. Thanks again. Keep reading and have a good night. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Gia. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thanks bye, for bye, Sam. bye. bye.